first start off with a joke. Well, not really a joke. It's a fact. Did you know that 9 out of 10 doctors in Soviet Russia recommend government toothpaste? Where'd that 1 out of 10 doctor go? Oh, God. Well, you know how this marker's a bullet? Yeah, this marker probably went through his head. <laughs> and you know what he's doing in the afterlife right now? Solving this problem with us! Today, we're taking the derivative of y equals tangent of x via the limit definition. So, let's begin. Let us start from right over there. So, did you know that tan of two angles is equal to tangent of the first angle plus tangent of the second angle? Yeah, I know, you're very sad. I'm not making any sinha, cos, and tanha jokes because I started to write the parentheses again. Yeah, shut up. No one cares. 1 minus tan of x, tan of 8. Alright, so now that we know that, let's start. So we're taking the limit, it's approved to 0, of tan x plus 8, right, right? And then we take the limit of minus tan of x. Okay, yeah, that's not actually what we're doing. We're taking the limit of this entire fraction. No, no, no. So, and then you have tan of x plus tan of 8. You know, this is cookie cutting stuff, right? Well, the stuff we're about to jump into right now is not cookie cutting. <laughs> so, anyway, you have plus tan, or rather minus tan of x over 8. Now, you might think, well, so more now, this will be equal to t squared, a squared, n squared, x8. Well, that's not how things work, buddy. This is a trigonometric function, not t, a, and n as separate variables, you know? So anyway, now we're going to multiply this by 1 minus tan x tan h over 1 minus tan x tan h, right? To create a common denominator. So, how will we do that? Well, I just explained it to you, so that was probably a stupid question. Tan of x plus tan of h. And what happens when we multiply this by... Well, we get... I'm just kidding. We get minus tan of x and then minus minus plus. So spreading negativity is good for once. Plus tan squared x. And then you have tan h. And that's divided by... We can combine these two denominators since this entire fraction is surrounded by them. So we have h times 1 minus tan of x, tan of h. Man, there were a lot of parentheses now. So what could we do here? Well, you know what? I see an opportunity. Why? Cancel, cancel, my guy. Now... The remaining two factors on the top both have the factor tan h. So we're going to factor out tan of h on the top. So that gives us tan of h. Man, that's a lot of parentheses. And then you have 1 plus tan squared x over h1 minus tan x tan h. You know what? This denominator is pretty boring. And we're not, we aren't going to spice it up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Stop, stop booing, stop booing. So anyway, <clears throat> what is this? Well, mi amigos, I can show you right now. If, don't you remember how sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to 1? If you don't, get out. But if you do, then you might realize what happens if we divide the whole thing by cosine squared of x. In that case, we not only get less sloppy handwriting, but we also get sine squared x over cosine squared x equals tan squared x. Cosine squared x plus cosine squared uh, over cosine squared x is 1. And cosine squared x, cosine squared x, cosine squared x equals secant squared x. So... That means that this is 
really just secret squared x, you know? So, right now I'm doing splits, but more importantly, if I don't break my hips, we'll finish this problem. Hand of eights, secret squared of x over, now we're gonna spice up the denominator. How? Well, oh my friend, you will see. You know how tan of eight, you know how tan of x is equal to sine of x over cosine of x? Well, that's true with tan of eight too, obviously. So we're going to make this sine of eight over cosine of eight. So that gives us sine of eight up here, and then secant squared of x over eight times one minus tan of x. And you might say, oh, Chaboni, where did the cosine x go? Well, be patient, okay? Times cosine eight. So now, we're gonna take this limit. Going far, far away, but definitely not to us. Realize that sine of eight over eight, as you take the limit as eight approaches zero, this entire thing approaches one. So that means we could essentially eliminate that from the equation. Now, cosine of eight, as eight approaches zero is of course going to be one. And then you have this whole predicament. One minus tan of x, tan of eight. So zero, which gives us one minus zero, which is one. So everything is defined. So now the limit is eight approaches zero is equal to, you have sine of eight secant squared x over eight times one minus, one minus tangent of x, tangent of eight, and cosine of x. Wait, cosine of x? No, cosine of eight. So now, we know that sine of eight over eight is going to one, so we have a prime of x. And we don't really need the limit anymore because we can set h to zero. And of course, we know that setting h to zero over here gives us one minus zero times one. So we get a prime of x equals secant squared x over one. And that means that we have f prime of x is equal to secant squared x 